Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the November 4th, 2019 Town of Scarborough Planning Board meeting. If you all join me with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Doreen, could you call the roll, please? Nicholas McGee. Here. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. Roger Bealey. Here. Richard DuPerry. Here. Jennifer Ladd. Here. Rick Meinking. Here. We have uh, approval of the minutes for October 15, 2019. Uh, they are not quite ready yet, so I'm going to motion to table the item. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. And next item. Planning Board will conduct a public hearing to receive comment on the proposed amendments to the Town of Scarborough zoning map for adjustments to the boundary of the Crossroads Plan Development CPD zoning district. Before I turn it over to you, I'm just going to make a quick administrative note that uh, Robin is not here this evening, so Rick Duperry is a voting member this tonight. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick intro. Uh, the, this is an applicant driven amendment um, to the zoning map to change a 15 acre parcel. Uh, currently zoned as Village Residential 4 uh, to the CPD Zoning District. And the purpose is to expand the CPD Zoning District and incorporate it into the Downs uh, Redevelopment Project. So the applicant has met with the Long Range Planning Committee uh, earlier this year, and the committee had some questions about the uh, potential impacts on abutting properties, and the committee suggested the applicant coordinate a neighborhood meeting. Um, I'm sure Dan will inform the board about that. That's all I have. Thanks, Jamel. Dan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dan Bacon here on behalf of Scarborough Downs. Um, as introduced, uh, this is a proposed zoning map change to uh, grow the Crossroads Plan Development District to include this approximately 15-acre parcel. It's just east of the Downs, um, between Scarborough Downs and Sawyer Road. As mentioned, it's in the Village Residential 4 District. Um, and it's, a, it's an upland parcel that's that's really easiest accessed from Scarborough Downs versus Sawyer Road. Um, and uh, we're proposing to, to change the zone to include it. Um, as mentioned, uh, we had a uh, long range planning committee meeting. After that, we organized, organized a neighborhood meeting. It was conducted at the grandstands. Um, we notified property owners uh, beyond, including and beyond 500 feet um, from the parcel. There were three different residents that attended, um, and after the presentation of the proposal, um, all three had no concerns with uh, the zone change. Um, since then, we obviously had first reading with the town council announced before you for a public hearing. Um, the plans I have up here, uh, obviously this one illustrates just the, the zoning map change. Uh, the one below shows the parcel, um, and it's hard to see, it's outlined in red. Uh, within the, uh, the land use plan per the comprehensive plan, and that entire pink area is what the, the comprehensive plan um, recommended be a crossroads mixed use zone. So you'll see that it, it actually, the crossroads zone extends beyond Scarborough Down. So I'm illustrating that this parcel, uh, by changing the zoning, it would be consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, the other plan shows the different ways the site could be developed. So today in the Village Residential 4, um, the site can be accessed from the Downs, it can be developed from the Downs. Um, the, the, uh, the difference would be that there would be a buffer between development on the Downs and this parcel, and there would not be a buffer from this parcel to the neighboring properties, which are Village Residential 4. Um, so, it's not a matter of whether it can be developed, it's sort of how it can be developed. With the zoning map change, because the Crossroads District requires a 100-foot buffer to all residential zones that abut it, um, it would actually, it would add a buffer to all neighbors, and then the development that would occur would be kind of integrated, master planned with development within the Downs. So I think that, feature in particular was what the neighbors appreciated. It's not a matter of whether the rezoning creates development, it's kind of how the development happens and um, abutters would benefit from a buffer. And so we feel like 
it's a better design to kind of have that buffer be consistent with the rest of the project and have the development that ultimately happens on the parcel be designed uh, in concert with the rest of the Scrubber Downs project. So um, at this point, that's, that's my introduction. I'm happy to answer questions um, if the board or the public has any. Thank you, Dan. Uh, at this time, we do have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this topic, please approach the podium. Just state your name. Seeing that, I'm going to close public comment. Um, I'm just going to open this up in general with the board for anyone that wants to weigh in or has a question. Feel free. Rachel? I just want to, um, I have one question, just going to sure. confirm. Uh, there would be no access from that parcel into Sawyer Road vehicle access, is that correct? Correct, yeah. The current zoning doesn't allow a um, road connection to Sawyer Road, be between Sawyer Road and the crossroads zone, if that road connection serves commercial traffic. Um, it does allow a connection if it's serving only residential traffic, but the way the Downs is being designed with interconnected streets, um, there's really no way of it only <laughs> being residential uh, based on how we're designing the project. So. Long-winded answer is that it wouldn't connect to Sawyer Road for vehicle traffic because of that limitation. That was pretty much all I had. Um, in the absence of many other questions, I'm going to take that as an affirmative, um, positive response to the zoning change. Great. Pass that along to the council. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. <clears throat> Next item on our agenda is Maine Medical Center requests a site plan review for 92 Campus Drive, Assessor's Map R76, Lot 4A. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so as a reminder, this is located in the Business Office Research uh, Zoning District within Maine Medical Center's existing campus along Route 1. Uh, so the applicant was last before you all in August. Um, as a reminder, the applicant's proposing 108,000 square foot, three-story medical office building. Um, the applicant did provide their main DEP permit uh, this morning, uh, so just in time for the meeting. And there are some remaining comments related to traffic and lighting that staff has raised. Um, these have been incorporated into a draft motion. Uh, if the board is comfortable with this approach, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Jamal. <clears throat> I'd like to go ahead and we've seen this a few times, so maybe just um, hit the real high notes on anything that might have changed that would grab our attention. And as uh, Jamel's indicated, he thinks most of the minor details could be left for uh, staff review and, and dealt with in that manner. So. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. This will be quick. Again, my name is Alexander Green. I'm uh, Director of Planning for Maine Health and Maine Medical Center. Thank you again for having us. I uh, just wanted to address very quickly a few of the comments that were made. One, on traffic. Um, we have a revised uh, plan that address all of the comments. We'll be submitting that tomorrow morning pending any other fur further comments from the board. There was another comment about lighting being associated with hours of operation. Um, hours of operation in this building will uh, 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 vary a little bit because of the three different practices that exist in the building. So what we're going to propose and what will be in the submission tomorrow will be dimming lights between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m. Uh, those lights will be on motion sensors. And then the third comment that I'd like to address is uh, that about signage. I want to mention that um, you know, wayfinding signage for the building will be integrated with existing signs, and there will be no building sign added to the to the building. Um, so, if there are any further questions, we can we can answer those. With that, I have nothing further, so, other than thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have an opportunity for public comment this evening. If anyone would like to speak on this topic, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, Again, I'm going to open this one up just in general to the board. If anyone wants to weigh in with a question or a concern. Rick. Yes, I noticed in your photometrics you had a reduced um, plan and then you had the photometrics. Uh, what's, what's the significance of the uh, reduced output plans? Uh, I, I believe the uh, reduced output plans show that the dimming will be along the perimeter, the rear perimeter that abuts the residential uh, properties behind us. Um, that's really the only place we're suggesting that we dim lights. Other than that, um, the center will be So the photometrics on, on the reduced is when you have the lights timed uh, at a decreased output? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 
Thanks, Rick. Anyone else? Rachel. Yeah, um, I had a, a question about the, the light dimming, and it, it's simply an observation that a lot of times we see that the lights will be dimmed at the close of business, uh, and I'm never quite sure um, how you define the close of business, because it may be in this case that patients leave, but staff is left behind, and I, I don't think we should be encouraging staff to walk out in the dark if the lights are off, so I would simply urge you to consider that definition, uh, that there is a certain issue of, of staff safety there. Uh, the other thing is, I was looking again at the landscape plan, and that's always dangerous. Uh, and I noticed that you had one of the uh, plants that you were using was the ivory um, lilac, tree lilac, uh, and which I personally like. Uh, we've, we've had them before. Uh, I couldn't find them on the landscape plan. Could you just point them out to me? I'm going to ask for an assist. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, I normally would be able to answer your question, but <laughs> Sebago Technics didn't do these landscape plans. The landscape architect from SMRT is not with us tonight, so I really can't answer your question. Other than as a fellow landscape architect, um, I've been guilty of that before. Of, so you have a plan with the lilacs in the schedule, but you can't find them on the plan because they were in at some point and then got changed. So that's the best I can do. It, it is not absolutely crucial, but it is a, a matter of, as I said, a, a matter Sorry, of interest. A yeah, well, we'll talk. The, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it is, you know, something that, that we do take a, a look at, and I understand given the, com the complexity of the landscape plan, and it is robust, and it does look very good, but I did have a question about those particular plans. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Um, I have a question. I noticed that you're proposing the use of a Wavetronics unit, which I just recently had like a little info session on. So I think this is a really um, innovative technology for using in this case. Um, but I was curious whether or not the town or um, <coughs> public work staff or the additional staff that we have available for signal maintenance. Um, um, it was clear to me that the applicant would be um, involved in the installation of this unit, but knowing that we don't have any others here, I was just curious about the maintenance of that go ongoing. Is Has that been talked about? That's a good question. We don't have them in town, and so it has not been discussed about the future maintenance with the applicant that I'm aware of. Jamel, have you? Uh, I haven't heard either, so we'll have to chat about that. <laughs> Just curious. I, you know, I think they're like they're generally regarded as not needing a lot of maintenance, so that's an advantage. But in the event that something went wrong, it's my understanding of it anyway is that it's. A technology that might um, we might not readily have someone here to maintain right. that, we, and we wouldn't in house. Right. Um, that's all. That was my only question. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'm going to fourth a motion. <clears throat> I move to approve the site plan project titled Scarborough MOB, proposed by Maine Medical Center as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics dated 10 21 19 with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings The applicant is proposing to construct a new 108,000 square foot three story medical office building with associated parking, pedestrian infrastructure, utilities, and stormwater management infrastructure. The proposal will utilize existing frontage on US Route 1. The property is located within the Business Office Research BOR zoning district and is identified on the Town of Scarborough's tax maps as map R76, lot 4A. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization, layout, access, internal vehicular movement, parking, pedestrian waste, landscaping, stormwater management, lighting, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Waivers, one, permit the proposed parking aisle width of 24 feet instead of 25 feet. Conditions, one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, a 
plan note indicating the specific times the lights will be dimmed on the property as discussed with the planning board. B, the standard plan note for Chapter 419, Post-Construction Stormwater Infrastructure Management Ordinance. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, address the traffic peer review comments and traffic solutions memo dated 10-27-19. B, pay the traffic impact fees. C, final four plans for the proposed building. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Three, prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant shall submit a final signage plan. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, a developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. Five, prior to the issuance of a cer certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall provide inspections and documentation of the existing storm drain system downstream of the proposed project to confirm the system is functioning properly. That is the motion. Second. I have a second. I have any discussion. Seeing none, all in favor. So that's unanimous. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Next item on tonight's agenda is AV Technic LLC request a site plan review for the Downs, Lot 28, with the Innovation District, Assessor's Map U53, Lot 4. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a quick reminder, the applicant's proposing a 24,420 square foot warehouse and office building. Um, the proposal is located on Lot 28 within the Innovation District on the corner of Innovation Way and an unnamed private drive. Um, so that applicant was before the board last, actually at the last meeting in October. Uh, so during the last review, the board and the applicant had a lengthy discussion about the wide northerly driveway into the site given the prominent location of the site and the impacts on the anticipated bicycle pedestrian activity. The board requested that the applicant provide an auto turn simulation for the types of vehicles that will need to maneuver in and out of the site to ensure the width of the proposed driveway is absolutely necessary. The applicant did provide this documentation and has also narrowed the driveway down uh, to 93 and a half feet. If the board agrees that this evidence demonstrates the need for a driveway this wide, the town's traffic consultant has suggested that the applicant install a one-inch raised concrete strip across the full width of the driveway to help with delineation. So the board should be sure to provide direction on this tonight. Staff has also suggested that the applicant provide additional planting and landscape provisions within the island between the two proposed driveways to help screen the wide driveway and overhead doors and truck parking from the main intersection and pedestrian gathering place along Innovation Drive. The applicant has made some improvements to the bike ped uh, elements as, uh, as suggested, including a new segment of sidewalk um, and additional striping for the bike ped advisory lane uh, along the Innovation, that connects to the Innovation Way. The applicant's also proposing a nine foot wide striped advisory lane where it crosses the driveways. However, staff has suggested that the advisory lane remain the same width at four feet uh, to limit any confusion. At the last meeting, the board did express that you were comfortable with the proposed parking on the site, uh, given the applicants proposing less parking spaces than is required, and staff is comfortable working with the applicant on an acceptable plan note uh, that reflect the standards set forth in the zoning ordinance. So staff has provided a draft motion uh, for you all this evening um, with conditions of approval uh, for your consideration. Thanks. Thank you, Jamal. Uh, Nancy, so we have a, um, this is what, third, fourth time? Similar uh, to the last project? <laughs> uh, three. So uh, try to keep to the high notes. Yes. And uh, anything that you think might come up with discussions with staff. Sure. All right, thanks. Uh, we do appreciate the opportunity to come back to see you folks. Uh, as Jamel had mentioned, we were before you last on the 15th of October. Uh, at that time, uh, you folks asked us to take a closer look at uh, specifically the width uh, of the uh, northerly curb cut on the site. And uh, we did provide, uh, as Jamel mentioned, a series of uh, turning maneuver templates that show various size vehicles that need to uh, maneuver in and out of the site. So that information was provided to you folks, to staff, and to the peer reviewer. We've gotten comments back on that. Um, in response to the request for us to look at ways to tighten things up, we actually did reduce the uh, northerly driveway width uh, by about six feet. Uh, it is 93 and a half feet before we were, before you uh, last time, it was about 99 and a half feet. 
Uh, so we have tightened things up a bit uh, with regard to that uh, and have demonstrated that we do need to have uh, the space that's shown on the plan for maneuvering. We have received the uh, memoranda that was issued by staff and the peer reviewers uh, late last week, and we've reviewed that. There are just a couple of things we did want to, uh, to talk to you folks about. Uh, specifically, uh, in the peer review memo, and if you uh, had read through the uh, response to comments that we had filed prior to that, uh, there was a discussion with regard to waiver requests. Uh, there were two waivers that uh, we did not feel were applicable in this case. Um, however, based on further review uh, by the staff, the staff uh, has reiterated that they do feel that those are applicable. So tonight uh, we are officially requesting that those waivers uh, be granted. There are four total. We had asked for two previously, so I'll start with the two prior ones. Uh, one was to allow the um, dead-end parking in an excess of 10 spaces. We have 12 shown in the front there, so we are asking for a waiver uh, on that. In addition, um, the waiver uh, we had requested was with regard to the entrance width uh, for this uh, type of um, uh, property. Uh, the typical entrance width is 26 to 30 feet. We have on our southerly entrance a 26 foot wide access, so that does not require a waiver, uh, but the 93.5 uh, foot wide uh, entrance does require a waiver. So those are the two that we had previously requested as well. Uh, the two additional ones are cited in the memoranda uh, that was uh, issued by staff, and they are with regard to uh, the separation between entrances. We're proposing uh, 79.6 versus 90. Um, we're also respectfully requesting a waiver on the distance from uh, the innovation, uh, excuse me, the uh, innovation way uh, to the entrance to the site, which uh, per the site plan standards, that would be 125 feet. We are asking for 67.2. So those are the two additional waivers uh, that were at issue uh, and have been noted by staff uh, as a recommended uh, request as well. So we are respectfully requesting those as well. A uh, <clears throat> couple of other things we just wanted to touch base on. Uh, one of the comments that was received by the traffic engineer uh, in peer reviewing the site was the recommendation to show a uh, concrete slab across the uh, northerly curb cut that is shown on the graphic here. Uh, it extends <clears throat> this area here. along the entire width of that curb cut. So uh, that is shown in the graphic. Uh, it's probably not on that graphic on the screen. That was the site plan that was submitted in response uh, to that, but it is shown uh, here on the graphic, and it is in accordance with the recommendations of your uh, peer review engineer with regard to that. Uh, we will be providing, as part of any condition of approval, a detail that shows uh, the specifics of that. We do have to have some areas that would be flush uh, in order to accommodate drainage. Uh, those typically would be at the ends of that uh, raised median, if you will. And we'd also like to look specifically with regard to the um, uh, edge treatment of that to make sure that it isn't a constant uh, barrier for the trucks that are coming in and out of the site because as you can see for uh, the maneuvering uh, in the loading area, there's quite a bit of activity. So we want to make sure that it's a, it's a transition that's obviously something that a driver would know and see visually, uh, but not something that was, was a constant chronic maintenance issue, et cetera. So uh, we will be working with staff uh, to make sure that we have an appropriate detail for that, uh, for that area. The <clears throat> other couple of items, um, one was a request and recommendation to add some additional landscaping uh, in the island area closest to the at-grade dock. Right now we have some uh, trees and some ornamental grasses, and I believe the recommendation is for more of a mid-range uh, vegetation to help screen uh, in that area, and we certainly would provide that. Uh, most likely with a, a varying height of an ornamental grass consistent with the, the rest of the uh, design of the site uh, for landscaping. So we would, we would provide that uh, for that. <clears throat> In addition, uh, as recommended by staff, we have changed the striping on the plan so that that advisory bike lane is a consistent four foot width throughout the entire area. The striping of that would be just on the 
uh, back edge of the uh, concrete median that we just discussed. So that is on the plan. If you recall, uh, one of the discussion items uh, was a recommendation, I think, from you, Mr. Chair, with regard to extending the sidewalk uh, along uh, the private access drive up to the first curb cut, and that is provided uh, on the enclosed plans so that you, you folks have already seen. We also extended that advisory striping around the corner uh, to Innovation Way, so that is uh, on the plan as well. So uh, the last couple of things, one, there was a, a comment with regard to uh, dimming the lights. And we had, uh, as you know, in the application materials, responded that the applicant has an operation that uh, the hours when his uh, trucks are coming in and out are really dependent on the function that they're attending, its location, et cetera. So it really isn't a closing time, if you will. Um, so we would like to be able to keep those uh, on from uh, dusk to dawn, uh, as we had originally proposed. I believe that there is a comment in here about looking at dimming the lights uh, on motion sensors. The concern about motion sensors is um, sort of when they get activated, that type of thing, uh, and maneuvering uh, for the trucks coming in and late at night. So what we would like to do is coordinate further with the staff uh, as well as our lighting consultant to look at ways to perhaps target certain lights on the site that might be able to be dimmed uh, and be on a motion sensor. Uh, but there will be a uh, proposal for keeping the, the lights that are in the loading area in particular and those other sensitive areas on um, at, throughout the night uh, in order to accommodate safety uh, for, the, for the employees and the vehicles that are coming in and out uh, through the site. <coughs> uh, so uh, as Jamel had mentioned, just wanted to also reiterate, we have uh, pro provided you with a couple of exhibits on reduced parking. Uh, we've presented that uh, for you folks, but we are asking that you do include in your motion uh, an authorization for us to uh, construct lesser uh, than the ordinance would require. <clears throat> and uh, the last couple of items, um, architecture and signage, we did provide uh, the information on the fenestration as well as these building mounted signage square footage. Uh, if there's a particular exhibit that staff would like to see to supplement that, we can certainly provide that. But those numbers are actually in our application uh, package. And uh, the last thing was a request to have <coughs> the um, Portland Water District provide us with a letter. There's an ability to serve a letter that's for the whole project that's already in place. Uh, we did receive our sign off on the sanitary district on the 24th last week, and uh, the town has that. And so we would provide a similar letter uh, as part of a condition of approval from the water district uh, for the site. And uh, the last uh, item is the dumpster. Uh, we had proposed a dumpster enclosure that's shown on the plans. It is a, a vinyl coated, black vinyl coated uh, chain link fence with the black PVC privacy slats within it. It's more of an industrial look. It fits with the building design, et cetera. Uh, and that is the, the enclosure that we have proposed for the site. Uh, so with that, I would certainly turn it to you folks for any further questions or comments. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on the topic, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. <coughs> um, I just want to say thank you for going back and reworking some of the auto turn numbers um, and also being able to reduce that width mm -hmm. and the addition of the sidewalk and working again with that pedestrian way. So I think uh, overall some very nice improvements made um, and appreciate your willingness to go back and look at all of that again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could just add, when you mentioned sure. the word sidewalk, it triggered. Uh, in coordinating further with Mr. Butler on fire access, um, there's actually, we've, we've shown here on the plan, <clears throat> And that's in accordance with the fire department requirements. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to open this up for the whole board. Uh, does anyone here have any questions or comments? Roger. Uh, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, did a good job. Um, I'd just like to, you to clarify something for me, and it's probably me more than anything else. 
Um, regarding the sidewalk, it's my understanding on Innovation Way, there's going to be sidewalks on both sides of the street. On, Innova on Innovation Way, there's a sidewalk on the southerly side of Innovation Way, so it's oh, on the opposite side from this site. Oh, okay, okay. That clarifies it then. Okay. Um, that's the only, and, oh, one last other comment is I don't have a problem with the, um, with the, with the dumpster that you're recommending. So, Thank you. Uh, that clarifies the sidewalk situation for me. I was up nights worrying about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Roger. Any, uh, anyone else? Right. I just have two quick minor ones. Um, one of them is regarding the lighting. I'm not, can you see this lot from any residential? Not to my knowledge at all. Yeah, I no. don't think you can, so I'm not, I don't remember discussing the dimming, but I'm not awfully concerned with the dimming, um, considering you can't see it from anything other than more industrial lots. And then, um, oh, and then the other thing was just more on a, Curiosity. I, I just don't see the transformer pad anywhere. I know you probably know where it is. Uh, the transformer pad is actually, uh, we had shown it on the opposite side of that, um, uh, this pole that comes down on the opposite side of that private drive. It's near Innovation Way. We had a transformer down in that area there. Okay. It's, it's not a big deal. I was just hoping it wasn't somewhere in the middle of the <laughs> snow storage areas because we've been having tends to be a problem for CMP sometimes. That's all I have. Thanks, oh, you did a great job with all the updates. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Rick. Yeah, I appreciate you working with the staff on lighting controls. Um, there's lots of creative ways that we can reduce output on, on parking lot lights. It, irks me to no end to have nothing going on and lights on full wattage. Um, so please work with the staff, come up with, uh, there's controllers there that can do some unique timing and be able to be uh, accessible for your staff if they have to come in at odd hours. Uh, there's, there's very uh, creative ways of getting that done. So uh, I'm glad you will work with staff and um, I'm going to hold them to that. That's it, Nick. Thanks, Rick. Jen? Um, I know you pointed out on this graphic the where you were proposing the, ch the change from bituminous to concrete, but I'm just kind of having a hard time seeing it. Is it, the, is it the change in the hatching area? Because it looks like, it looks to me like you've hatched the parking area and not the roadway. And so I'm just curious like how wide you're, how wide you're thinking of that. So I think one of the things that is confusing is that image that you're looking at, the black and white yep. image, doesn't have that marking on okay. it. So that's why I couldn't see it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not losing it. You were losing sleep too, right? <laughs> so basically, um, if, you, if you look at that plan right there, you'll see it, it had called out a nine-foot dimension. Okay. Yes. So right. for the striping. The, the um, advisory bike ped lane is actually four feet wide. So where that four foot offset runs, which is basically a projection of the curb line along the private drive, right. from that point towards the building, six feet wide, the entire width of that curb cut would be where that would be located. Okay, and the, the vision for that was for a concrete treatment from curb to curb, like the whole length of the driveway opening with varying um, thickness, because I know you talked about the importance of having a portion of it being flush, or were you, or was the idea that the concrete would be shortened such that it would be the bituminous stretch that was flush? We would look at having, from a visual perspective, that product would be concrete uniformly in okay, the width, so just the height would, okay. would deviate for that. Okay. Um, this is a tough one for me because I feel like the position of this lot and the um, early 
you know, the early development of this site versus some of the others, I feel like these are really big waivers to give. Um, but I, under, I also understand the, the, fu the functionality of the site and appreciated the applicant's um, explanation at the last meeting about how they were going to be using this, um, further proved by the, the, ex the exhibit that was provided for auto turning. Um, I just, the, 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 the precedent here is something that's kind of hanging me up in terms of both you know, granting waivers from something that we're otherwise asking to be 20 to 30 feet to, to be nine, over 93 feet. Um, and then also putting in a, a concrete treatment like this. I mean, as I understand this district, this should not be, um, this shouldn't and probably won't be a unique case on this lot. So my guess is that we will <coughs> go on to see other uses like this that will also want wider driveways like this. Um, and so, you know, I don't know if there's, it, it might just warrant a larger conversation, I guess, um, because, you know, I could see if every, if, if the idea, if every lot needs a waiver in order to provide um, development like this, I just think maybe it's something we should talk about more. I will say that uh, staff has been working, <coughs> excuse me, with the applicant on, uh, it's definitely a unique site that we haven't really seen yet in town and um, some of the sites actually don't really, um, they can't really meet some of the requires in the site access. So, you know, we still believe that the site access requirements apply, but I think staff's gonna work with the applicant on a, some sort of policy document uh, just to sort of help help form the conversation and development in the future, just so things aren't snagged as they have been. But I'll stop there. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Rachel. Yeah, um, I, I too uh, think there needs to be some creativity involved in the lighting. Uh, it, it could be that the lights in the front are dimmed and the lights in the back are on, but w whatever it is, um, I, I think I'm with my colleague that the thought of having lights on full time lasting for the whole site 24 hours a day possibly just is not what we want to start to see down there. Um, <clears throat> I have a question on the sidewalk and probably the staff can answer it but I'm sure you can as well. Uh, at the driveways, is there, uh, is, are they ADA? Yes. Okay, because I only have the current one and I need my magnifying glass to see anything on it. All right, that, that was a concern that I had. <clears throat> I have no issue with the uh, um, dumpster enclosure as you proposed, and that's it. Thanks, Rachel. <clears throat> Anyone else? All right, uh, seeing no other comments, um, I will put forth the motion uh, for the board to consider. <clears throat> I move to approve the site plan project titled Lot 28, Innovation District, as depicted on the plan set prepared by St. Clair Associates, dated 10 19 with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings, the applicant is proposing to construct a 24,420 square foot warehouse and office building with associated parking, pedestrian infrastructure, and utilities. The proposal is located on Lot 28 of the approved <coughs> Innovation District subdivision within Phase 2 of the Scarborough Downs Redevelopment Project. Property will utilize frontage on Innovation Way and a private drive. Property will utilize will utilize frontage on Innovation Way and Center Street. Property is located within Crossroads Plan Development CPD Zoning District. Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design and site plan adequately addresses site plan review, zoning ordinance, and Innovation District regulating plan requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, parking, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, light lighting, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Waivers, one, permit the proposed 79.6 feet of separation between the proposed driveways along private drive instead of the required 90 feet. Two, permit the proposed 67.2 feet of separation between the proposed southerly drive and the tangent point of the curb radius at the intersection of Innovation Way and the private drive instead of the required 125 feet. Permit the proposed, three, Permit the proposed 93.5 foot wide driveway instead of required driveway width of 26 to 30 feet. 
four, permit the proposed dead end parking lot with 12 spaces. Conditions, one. Planning Board has determined that the particular building can be occupied or use carried on with fewer parking spaces than required and has reduced the requirements for off-street parking in accordance with Section 11, 11C in the Zoning Ordinance prior to any chance of use, cha change of use and or tenant on the site. The applicant shall provide written notice to the Planning Department for staff to determine whether the changes should be reviewed by the Planning Board. Two, prior to the issuance of a bil building permit, the applicant shall revise the plan set to include A, a six foot wide, one inch raised concrete strip with, is that word? I think it's chamfered. Chamfered, all right. <laughs> chamfered edge across the full width of the nor Northerly Drive, as noted in the Traffic Civil Peer Review Memo by Traffic Solutions dated 10 19 B, additional landscaping <clears throat> and screening provisions within the island separating the two proposed driveways as discussed with the planning board. This plan shall be prepared by a landscape architect. C, striped four foot wide bicycle pedestrian advisory lanes along both sides of the private drive, including appropriate pavement markings within the lanes. D, a wooden stockade fence surrounding the dumpster enclosure with a detail. Get rid of that one. Uh, it's gonna be a vinyl, is that what it, black vinyl? Black vinyl Maybe just take it out. fence with privacy slats. They do? Yeah. Okay. So their D is going to be changed to read an additional walkway connecting the building's easterly egress to the parking area as required by the fire department. So there will be no D that contains anything about your dumpster enclosure. Thank you. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. <clears throat> Three, prior relations of a building permit, the applicant shall A, pay the traffic impact fees, B, provide approval by the Portland Water District. C, coordinate with staff on the proposed light fixtures to ensure that they are full cutoff fixtures. D, revise building elevations that include the required fenestration measurements and percentages to ensure compliance. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Four, prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the applicant shall provide a final signage plan. This shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Five, prior to the start of construction, a pre-construction meeting is required. The meeting shall include appropriate town staff, the developer, and their site contractor, and is to be coordinated through the planning department. That is the motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all in favor. Show that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Good luck to you. Thank you. Next item on tonight's agenda is SKS TVS Holdings LLC requests a sketch plan review for the Downs Lot 6 with Innovation District Assessor's Map U53 Lot 4. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the applicant is before you this evening with a sketch plan. Uh, staff would like to remind the board the sketch plan is a chance for a high level discussion about the project and helps set the table for a formal site plan application. So the applicant's proposing a 10,000 square foot office and warehouse building located on lot six within the innovation district subdivision at the end of an unnamed private drive. This lot has been identified as a back lot in the district's regulation plan. The applicant should discuss the proposed building design, um, including the proposed tenant space and the parking that may be necessary um, if and when these spaces are leased out. Staff would also like to note that several town departments raise concerns about the proposed design of the off-street parking adjacent to the private drive as there appears to be an opportunity to better delineate the entrance to eliminate back, uh, vehicles backing into the travel way. Staff has also recommended that the applicant provide for some sort of pedestrian connection uh, to the trail system located just to the north uh, within the open space for the project. And there also appears to be a lot of impervious area on the site, and so staff has recommended the applicant just keep in mind the needs for the site and try to minimize impervious cover uh, whenever possible. That's it. Thank you, Jamel. Nancy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Nancy St. Clair with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of SKS TVS Holdings LLC uh, to present a plan for you for a 10,000 square foot building in which the anchor tenant is actually Zoom Drain. 
Um, that is the applicant's company. Uh, there are two additional smaller tenant spaces uh, within the building. Uh, for those of you who uh, have ever had to have the occasion to call upon Zoom Drain, you would love them. Uh, if you are not familiar with them, they basically uh, provide services to residential and commercial customers to uh, deal with clogged drains and uh, piping systems uh, of that nature. So as part of their program, they have highly specialized trucks. There's a fleet of five of them that they have uh, that provide uh, the tools and equipment uh, in order to deal with clogged drains uh, and uh, maintenance issues associated with that. They highly, uh, have a highly trained staff and they highly respect the ability to be able to have uh, their technical people be experts in the field. So they do a lot of in-house training uh, as well. So if you've seen the floor plan for the building, you'll see that there is a, a training space available for them. The uh, building is designed in a way such that those specialized trucks have the ability to come into the building and be inside uh, during the colder months. Uh, so it is uh, designed with a drive-through uh, overhead doors on either end. They've also designed the two available tenant spaces, which are on the northerly side of the building, uh, to accommodate the same type of configuration. It's envisioned that those tenant spaces would be a space that would provide um, an opportunity for a business that would be a compatible type use, perhaps an electrician or uh, that type of a business to be able to have a small space to get in uh, with a garage space and uh, be able to uh, have their sort of beginning of their business, if you will, uh, to come through. So uh, as Jamel mentioned, this is actually at the end of the uh, private access drive that we've been spending so much time discussing. Uh, so this is what is considered a back lot. And uh, this site uh, has, as you'll see in sort of the south uh, east corner of the site where that um, private access comes in uh, to the property. The sort of gray, if you will, rectangle, the big one up there, uh, in the corner off of the northwest corner of, no, off the northwest corner is, um, there we go. <laughs> that is actually part of detention basin number one for the innovation district. So that's the grading uh, in the design. So you'll see, if you look closely at that plan along the westerly edge of the property, there's a drain line that comes down from Innovation Way uh, that comes down and discharges into that pond. And then along the northerly property line, uh, you'll also see another drain line that comes along and discharges out there. So there's two drainage pipes that come across the property uh, that are along those edges of the site. So if you look at the plan, you'll see that we have proposed uh, 29 parking spaces. Uh, they're shown uh, distributed around the building face, um, leaving the area for the overhead doors open and accessible. And uh, there is the dashed line that you see that's another nine spaces along the northerly edge of the parking, uh, which could be for uh, future additional parking if needed. We have allocated the 29 spaces that are on the site by providing 20 for Zoom drain, an additional nine for those two other smaller uh, tenant spaces. So um, as you can see from the rendering of the building, which we just received the last week, the um, view that you're looking at is looking directly at what would be the southeast corner of the building. So that's the first thing you'll see uh, as you approach into the site. Uh, so as part of our application materials as we move forward, we'll be providing more information on the signage and the fenestration and that type of thing. But as you can see, um, there's quite a bit of uh, glazing uh, on that corner uh, element and we believe it provides a very nice presentation uh, on the building itself. So uh, we'll be providing more information for you uh, on that as we move forward. <clears throat> We're uh, here tonight to present to you sketch plan. Uh, there were some comments that we did receive 
uh, as part of the staff initial review. And so uh, there's a couple things that you know we, we did want to talk to you folks about uh, with regard to those um, comments. And um, one is the, <clears throat> uh, as we discussed, we just provided you with a breakdown of the parking. But um, the other item is the, I believe it's probably the six parking spaces that are located on the southeast corner uh, of the site. And it gets back to that discussion about those private access drives and how things sort of lay out uh, with regard to that. We are at the very end of that private access drive. Uh, and so we have provided for an ability to share uh, with an access going into the lot that would be located to the east of this site. Uh, but we do not envision that this is a high traffic area. We do not envision that this is uh, something that um, would cause a great deal of conflict with those six proposed parking spaces in that location. The blue line that uh, is shown on that plan is the actual limit of the property. Uh, so all of the full 25 foot maneuvering area behind those spaces is actually within the limits of the property. One configuration potential uh, for the lot opposite um, this site on the easterly side would be to replicate uh, the dry vial and configuration that's shown on the southerly edge of this site. So basically the mirror image uh, would be an option for that particular lot. Um, but at this point we don't have a definitive layout for that. But given its location and the setting, we're confident that things can be worked out uh, to make sure that that's not uh, at issue and concern. And the applicant would very much like to be able to keep those parking spaces as they are configured uh, simply because of the layout of their building and the need for their spaces for uh, their use and their tenants uh, as well. So uh, just a couple of other items uh, with pedestrian access. Um, back to that uh, detention pond, uh, if you will, that pond area, there's an access easement that runs along the entire uh, easterly side of the property, uh, excuse me, westerly side of the property. and. On the design plans for that pond number one, there's a notation that the uh, area is to be used as the connection point to the trail system that's in the open space. So our vision for providing access to that trail system is off the end uh, of that uh, gravel area that's used for access and maintenance for the pond. That is consistent with the original subdivision approval for the innovation district. And looking at some of those plans that kind of addresses the, the next comment, if you will, uh, is with regard to providing additional landscaping along the northerly edge. That existing trail um, gets very close to the end of that uh, um, gravel access easement, but then it diverges. And it diverges to the extent that that trail is probably on the order of about 50 feet uh, in the woods from the cleared property limit that's on the site. As I mentioned in the introduction, there's a, a uh, storm drain line that runs along that northerly edge of the property, which we'll have to keep clear uh, in order to make sure that there's access and availability to uh, um, repair the pipe if needed. So <clears throat> with those things in mind, with regard to adding additional landscaping, we really feel that the placement of the existing uh, trail through there would not require that we have any more uh, landscaping and in, particularly in light of the fact that we have to maintain that easement area is open, uh, we would not propose adding any additional landscaping uh, to buffer the trail in the woods. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you folks to uh, offer any comments. Thank you, Nancy. Um, <clears throat> before we do that, I'm going to have a chance for public comment. Anyone here that would like to speak, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, Roger. <laughs> to start off, I think the building looks very nice, very attractive. Um, a question regarding the, um, the private drive on the uh, west side, where the six parking spaces are? Yes. Well, can, will that be another access point onto this property? The uh, 
way that it's laid out and shown there, um, we have the ability to tie into whatever would be on the opposite side, but it is not necessary for our site. Our mm -hmm. site would come in, our entrance point could be uh, simply at the lower drive aisle, and our internal drive aisle would connect to that. I ask that because I, you know, you have the gray area going right basically to the middle of the private private road. Is that is that correct? So the blue line that is shown on the plan is the limit of the property. Hmm. The shared access drive is actually in an easement which splits over the two properties all the way down through. That's how that is laid out. So half of that 50-foot easement is on the applicant's property. The other half of that easement is on the uh, property to the east. Remember, the easements don't exist right now, so the extent lengthwise of those easements is going to really be dependent on what those two properties need uh, in order to provide access. So we've shown sort of a random length there, uh, not knowing the, def the definition on the other side, but um, there is you know, certainly flexibility there. That's the intent of those private access drives. Sure. Um, now, I, I, I agree with uh, Jen's comments on, on the previous agenda item, and I was glad to hear that discussions are going on because um, I think this is a, I mean, this, this project is, is a great example of what we're going to be seeing, I think, on these back lots. And I, it seems to me these private roads are more like a, almost like a shared driveway. And um, I can see easily where, where somebody parking in those six spaces, it's six spaces, yeah, could easily go out on, get access out through that way as well. You know, not that I'm against it. I, I just don't, I don't see, I can see where there's going to be a need for a lot of different configurations, both access and parking and things like that on these back lots. Um, well, so I think that the Innovation District is aptly named. And I think that what we're encountering is, you know, there, there were uh, a tremendous amount of ideas set forth uh, as part of the overall plan for the Innovation District. And so we're at the point now where we're needing to sort of make those gel in the context of the applicable ordinance requirements and those that don't necessarily apply. And we've had, as you know, a bit of a go back and forth on that. We certainly really welcome the opportunity to participate with the staff in order to, as you mentioned, kind of look at it more in the bigger sure. picture. Yeah. Um. Uh, just um, a question to, to staff, maybe. Um, wasn't there a, a plan to have a, um, a trailhead at the end of in Innovation Drive to access the trails in, in the open space? I believe so. I'm looking to the design um, team. I can answer that. <laughs> and I know there's one um, to the, I guess, to the west of that is correct. where we've been looking, um, between Scarborough Downs Road and where we are. There's one there too, right? There's a there's a trailhead located to the west that ties in and connects to trails that are in and around the area of Detention Pond 1. Um, and then, so this uh, gravel access for the pipe maintenance will be sort of that connecting link between the existing trail that's on the north edge of that pond and the trails that are on the south edge. So that trailhead is further to the west and has an opportunity to connect into Innovation Way further to the west of the site. I believe there are, in the overall Innovation District, other locations similar to that, but there's no trailhead on this site other than the ability to link with that um, gravel access for maintenance to the existing trail that's off this site to the north. Okay, so there's, there is no trailhead at the end of Innovation? Well, we're not on innovation. We're on the private access. No, I understand, but I'm talking about the end of innovation. There, the, way at the end, yeah. yes. Yes, I believe there's one down okay. there as well. The reason I bring it up is I really, that open space, is that, is that does that abut um, Warren Woods at all? The open space um, 
in the Innovation District, particularly to the east of this site, at the end of Innovation Way, abuts Warren Woods. This, the open space um, that is north of this site, the close to this site, is actually owned by the development project. So there's open space within the project that's abutting this site to the north. Yeah. If that answers your question. So it doesn't. There's no. There's no. Uh, it doesn't abut Warren Woods anywhere along there. Not. Mm -hmm. the, this site does not about Warren okay. Woods. The reason I bring this it up is because um, I know we want to have be able to have people access open space and things like that, but this is, to me, these private ways are going to, th this is going to be commercial vehicles for the most part going in and out of these spaces. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure it's a, it's a conducive place to have People like me just going up there trying to park my car somewhere and right, you know. Well, and that's around. why we provided specific trailhead parking areas for the general public who can drive to or walk to those trailheads and then get on the trail system within the project, and then to Warren Woods. Um, so that's the reason for that. In terms of connections from individual sites, a site like this, their employees can walk over to the trail connection right behind and then have access from their, their place of work. But it's not intended to be for somebody from outside the project to drive to park and get to a trail on this site. Yeah, I, I, would, I would suspect that um, the employees, if they want to go walk in the woods, you know, after lunch or something like that, they'll create a path. In right, and it's somehow. actually right along the westerly okay. edge. That The path will be right there. Okay. but I. I Okay, so we're not talking about something for the public then. People like me just to drive up there. And no, the, okay. that, that's where you would drive to the, to the trailhead. Okay, and, okay. And right. the parking spaces. Okay. Um, now, like I said, I think the building looks really nice and um, um, I'll wait to see. You know, I understand the, the, you need the flexibility on the parking because you don't really know what's gonna be going in those other two sections. Mm -hmm. But I think it's kind of interesting you wanna be able to drive through. And the, and the nature of the business and everything. So I look forward to seeing more of it. Thank you. Thanks, Roger. And Chad? Um, just to confirm, the gravel access road that you're talking about to the stormwater management area is on the west edge of the this parcel? That is correct. That's, that's part of the... Uh, overall infrastructure for the Innovation District. So there is a drain line that extends from Innovation Way along the west side of the three lots, this okay. one and two others south of it, uh, between Innovation Way and this location. Okay. Thought being that any maintenance vehicles would enter that from Innovation Way? That was the original uh, plan for that area, okay. yes. Sorry, at some point I thought you were talking about the northern edge and the, what you're the confirming trail. makes the, much more sense. The, the trail is on the northern the edge the northern and edge. the okay. connection to the trail is off the northern end of that gravel access. Got it. So it's in the north east, uh, north, yeah, northwest corner. Okay. Um, as for the site layout, I obviously understand that this is, um, you know, early on in the process, but just out of curiosity, looking at the way that this has been laid out and the comment heard already about um, the amount of impervious area, just wondering if thought had been given to possible one-way circulation around this building, which might allow you to shrink all of that up a little bit. We can take a look at that. I'm not inclined to think that that might be something that would be feasible for uh, the layout simply because in the two tenant spaces, as I mentioned in our application materials, there's a potential that those two tenant spaces could be further divided so that each face of the building would have a smaller mm -hmm. overhead door access. So circulation, I believe, would get a little bit tricky with regard to that. Okay. Um, and you were talking before about potential, it might be too early even because obviously you can't predict the future, but 
I, one of the first things that jumped out at me in looking at this layout was, wow, what would happen if the same thing was mirrored on the other side or something similar was mirrored on the lot on the other side? Um, it seems like it would be a lot of paved area um, that may, you know, maybe not highly efficient paved area. Um, and so that's kind of why I was wondering about the one-way circulation because if I was thinking if that worked for this site, it might allow you a little bit of um, either green space or just some sort of delineation between that and the um, the adjoining site so that you didn't have sort of, you know, effectively like two 24-foot aisles mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. each, um, each property, even if you would only need one. Anyway, just... Just thoughts about that. I, I generally agree that it, it does look like a lot of um, paved area, but uh, also understand that the trucks you're dealing with are large and that therefore requires more area for maneuvering. So um, look forward to seeing future iterations. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Rick? What's the significance of the thousand gallon? Um buried tank I, I i remember reading it but i something about you carry that uh, you carry something on the trucks back to this place from your sites so zoom drain provides services on a residential level as well as a commercial level specifically dealing with uh, the maintenance of grease traps so for restaurants that type of thing so uh, they will have occasion where they need to pump that out it's a temporary holding tank, and it's picked up and collected by a hauler that will come in and, and remove it from the tank and take it away to a proper disposal site. Is that a pretty big hauler? Uh, a pretty big hauler? The, uh, recovery truck? Uh, not to my knowledge. I don't believe it's a huge one. Okay. Well, we'll see some detail on that. and mm -hmm. I'm sure there's regulations I don't even know about that have to do with subsurface tanks, uh, then I'm sure you'll have all that information provided for the, for the staff to review. We had provided as part of our application uh, package information on um, holding tanks, if you will, uh, buried holding tanks, separation distances, those types of things. So if staff has any further comments on it, then we certainly will address them. But we had located it based on the state standards for a holding tank. Okay. I'm good right now. Thanks, Rick. Looks good. Rick? Uh, yeah, I think I have actually have a question for staff. I know this is just a sketch plan review, so we don't have to go into too much detail here now, but where there are potentially two to four additional tenants, how do they work their submittal based on required parking spaces and traffic studies and all that stuff? So it's <clears throat> the off-street parking regulations are based on um, types of use. Um, so it, in their application, they noted uh, warehouse and office. So it sounds, oh, I guess I could ask them, but it sounds like they've uh, sort of calculated that into what they've provided. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks mm -hmm. like to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I saw where the, you did the, you said basically if the, if the, you know, if you built out the entire warehouse space, you'd still have within two spaces of uh, um, required parking, but there's no there's no office space currently with those other tenant spaces, right? They're just open, big open spaces? Typically on a space like that, there's an opportunity to have like a desk, um, but we're not envisioning that these would be office spaces. They're really more for a smaller contractor who, you know, needs a place to keep a couple files and have a desk to do paperwork at the beginning or end of the day. Um, but other than that, it's primarily a space for either storage of products that they need for their trucks and that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, you said, you know, consistent with the use of Zoom Drain. So, um, yeah, and for what, what you, for sketch plan, um, I think you got everything you need other than that there's this big vague area as to what happens with those other spaces but um if they just remain warehouse it, it seems like you've got that covered too so i guess we'll cross that when we get there 
That's all I have. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, I think I'm going to need Dan for this. Um, it's an easy one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a really quick answer, maybe. Um, because it, I, I think something I heard Nancy say raised some questions to me, and, and that is the end lots. I think I heard Nancy say that uh, either the, the limit of the lot includes the road, includes the private way. Yeah, actually all the lots along, if they're going to be served by a private way, um, have part of the private way easement on the lot. So the private ways are, or, or private driveways are within a 50 foot wide easement. 25 of that is on one lot, 25 is on another. So if you look at the graphic up there, you see a proposed easement that goes up to maybe a third of the way up the lot. Um, and that's how that lot and the lot across the private drive are accessed and also their utilities are within that easement. I, I, I understand that at the end of the private way, mm -hmm. it, and, and I also understand this is, the, is not the uh, um, final version by any means, oh, the or it's not. Subdivision plan, yep. Yeah, um, but as I look at it, the private way ends about halfway up the lot, yep. and then the two lots come together. Is that correct in terms of The ownership? two lots come together in terms of ownership? Along its entire length, the easement for the private drive only goes up a third of the way. So if you look at the graphic okay. up there, the lot includes um, the easement, which includes the driveway to get access to the lot. So, so if this sketch plan, uh, this one. Yep. Um, shows the driveway, uh, first of all, going down into lot 11, uh, encroaching on lot, lot 11, and also um, makes the assumption that the people who will buy, be buying lot 7 will want to have their driveway at exactly the same place, because if they don't, then the people in lot seven will only have one lane to get out and down to the rest of the um, private road. In other words, what, what we say now affects mm -hmm. uh, access and usage of lot seven, given this sketch plan. It does to a degree. Um, the development project, so the downs, not the lot owners, have an obligation to work with each lot owner to provide adequate access. So if there's some changes, uh, there's some additional extension of a drive, a private drive that's necessary to make, say, the lot across the way work, then the project will work with that lot buyer to make it happen. So, But if we've already given, if we, let's say we get to the end of this and we say, okay, this plan is what we accept as a board. In other words, granting the owners of lot six that full access all the way across the private drive. Then what happens? I, I know the downs would then work with them, but we've just... When you're saying the full access, the width onto the abutting lot's property, is that what you're referring to? It's, it's showing it right now that this lot is looking for permission to use the, have as its access the whole of the private drive, the private access road. Up to some point to get up, into up the Up to site. some point, and, yep. it, and, it, and it does stop. Yep. Um, and you don't see a conflict with what might happen with lot seven. Uh, and the owners of lot six, presumably all people of goodwill, but at some point when you have a question of access, mm -hmm. some conflict can come up. Uh, and I, I'm asking this because as I look at the site plan, we have other lots, roads with the same issue, and then we have some roads, uh, the private access roads that go all the way through where it's a little clearer. So I, I, 
I'm troubled by the claim that um, on this sketch plan mm -hmm. that that whole access road, including an area on lot 11, is theirs to determine first? Well, um, the intention at the subdivision level was to, if there is going to be each lot individually owned and individually developed along a private drive, that the private drive would be built up to this extent mm -hmm. to provide access to both lots, not only the one that you're reviewing now, but the one um, next door. Is it lot six or seven, the one you're referring to? So um, that buyer is under the same understanding as this buyer that that easement will be p provided to that point. So, so there, there's, this project isn't doing anything that the site across the street wouldn't do in terms of showing a driveway connection up to that point. So what we would see uh, when lot seven comes is we would see a plan that would assert that we need to review um, everything that lot seven has on the both lanes of the private access road. Um, yeah, I guess I'm not entirely understanding, but that we, you would review the access point into lot seven, which would be right across from the access point into this lot. And, um, but they would be identical and we would review them twice. And if there's a conflict, they'd be identical or we reconcile I don't know that they'd be identical, but they need to integrate and relate to each other. Which they would not immediately do if the sketch plan only asserted, uh, only presented to us something up to the median or the middle of the private access road. That's not true. And, and, and this is what we need to figure out because it, it refers, I mean, it, it is going to affect a lot of these other dead end lots. Correct. The configuration that you see within that blue line that's shown up on the screen, mm -hmm. from the blue line looking to the left, to the west, there's a 25-foot wide drive aisle and the parking. So that piece of the site can stand alone. The, to the east or to the right of that blue line, we have shown the potential that a point of access to serve that abutting lot could go in that location within the easement area that is shown graphically on that plan. But it doesn't have to. It could, for example, have an access that's the identical mirror to the entrance that comes in along the southerly side of the property. And that piece of pavement that is up above that access could go away and this site could stand alone. All right, so when you, you presented us with a sketch plan, but what you are really asking us to take a look at, you're presenting an option or a potential. Correct. So that if we ask, how are these connected? We Correct. ask for connectivity. Correct. You're showing us the potential connectivity, but you're not asking us to do anything other than look at that as potential connectivity. And our responsibility in terms of the sketch plan is to look at everything um, to the, uh, to lot six uh, uh, and presumably the easement along, um, as you show it up there, what you say you own into that lot. So, that uh, excuse me, you own, you, now do you own into that easement, the 25 feet that the, you're showing, or is it an easement? The, the, the blue line shows what is owned by the property. There is a 25 foot strip that is being described right there. That 25 foot strip is an easement that burdens the property that benefits the adjacent lot to the right or to the east. Likewise, the property is benefited by the same easement on the abutting lot as well as the easement that goes down through to connect down to Innovation Way. So if lot 11 
um, would like to use all of its lot, you're going to assert that the easement that you've already built, I mean, you're building, are you the, making that part of your driveway? The Downs would construct the shared access drive from this point all the way down to Innovation Way to provide access to this lot. It would burden those other two lots south of it as well as the other two on the opposite side as that strip comes up through to get to this lot. So what you're proposing here in terms of the, I'm going to use the term encroachment simply because that's, there's a line that encroaches. Um, lot, the potential purchasers of lot 11 would have to understand that you've already um, asserted your right to take part of their lot. That's within that easement area, that's correct. So that would be something that would have to show up on all deeds? All deeds? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yes. The, once, this is, once this lot is developed, then there would be a deed created for the easement uh, on that strip. Right now, that strip does not exist. It, it, un understood. Yeah. Um, I, I foresee some issues uh, in, in the long run, I, and I understand the ownership, and I understand the easement. Uh, and I understand that when you come back to us, what you're going to do is show us only the potential connection. Correct. Yeah. With uh, lot seven. It's really handy having this and keeping track of which lot is which. <laughs> uh, for those of you in the audience who can't see, we have 57 lots that we're trying to figure out by number. Um, okay, I, I, I foresee some confusion coming up and some very careful work and some very careful work by, by the Downs and the developer because this is going to, there's potential to create misunderstanding. Um, the only other comment I have on that is I, I would like to see landscaping to the rear some more. I understand that there's a, a, a drain or a pipe through there. I think a meadow, I think some more. Uh, landscaping of some sort is is warranted. There's an awful lot of uh, asphalt, an awful lot of impermeable surface. Uh, we don't know what lot seven is going to look like, but I think uh, Zoom Drain can set the way with some some really good back screening and back landscaping. And I certainly would uh, appreciate seeing that. And I am intrigued by the design there. It looks good. Um, I'm interested in seeing the full the full package. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Roger. Uh, yeah, just a couple of questions pertaining to what Rachel was just asking. Um, on the um, right away, uh, going up there, the vertical going north. Yes. Why, why does why didn't that go all the way up to the property, the end of the prop, the northern property line? Is there there must be some reason because it's the same throughout the whole. The the. The theory in the creation of these um, easements for the private ways was that if there was a potential user that wanted both lots, there would be no need for that to go all the way through. Same thing if a user were to purchase four lots or a clustering of them. So there's no need for it to continue. It's, there's nothing past it. It goes right to the open space. So it was brought in just graphically to show that this would provide uh, sufficient access to either of those two lots uh, if they were owned separately. If they were owned together, it wouldn't necessarily have to be there at all. Um, so that was sort of the background with that. Okay. Um, and then on the uh, horizontal private way below lot six and seven, you, they could actually have access of it right there too, couldn't they? Um, the, the, uh, setbacks are what's shown horizontally, yeah, if not, you will. Um, so those are setbacks. There was a discussion as part of the design of the Innovation District to allow shared use of that uh, for an access drive with parking on either side to be shared between properties as well. But that was not uh, something that's a formal easement, uh, not necessary to get access to the site. So, the, so basically, looking at this overall map, uh, the horizontal private ways, well, not, you won't be able to have access onto those. Is that correct? There's no horizontal private way on that map. 
Those are those are that's oh, just they're boundaries. Not, they're just setbacks. Setback lines. Oh, okay. They just look like it. They are. <laughs> Easement lines and setback lines. <laughs> okay. I'm well set. I'm confused. Thanks, Roger. Well <laughs> yeah, I think um, in I think we're very early on in this part of the development, and it is difficult, I think, to wrap our heads around what it is we're looking at in the sense that we're so accustomed to on this board looking at a traditional street with a traditional opening that somebody turns into, and um, that's not what we have here. It's not the design of what we're looking at. So, um, you know, beg our forgiveness as we process sure. and understand that this is going to probably look a lot different than what we're accustomed to looking at. In, um, so it'll take us a little time, so bear with us. Uh, you know, and, and my point uh, of saying that is because I, I look at it and that's a lot of asphalt. And if you did flip it on the side, you basically, the back two lots would just be pavement and two buildings potentially. If, if the abutting property at lot seven did a similar plan, basically it's just all asphalt. It's, it's a quote unquote dead end private road with a bunch of asphalt and two buildings in the back, which I think it's hard for us considering all of the regulations we typically work with around here to really wrap our minds around, but it is part of um, what, what can be considered out in this area. Um, so that said, I look forward to seeing what the next uh, round brings um, as far as um, changes or improvements. I would say that I, um, I am personally struggling with the the six parking spots on the easterly side because it looks like they're backing out into the roadway, but I know that's not a roadway, so I'm still working around that, but it's, um, I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'd like to see the next round. So, I'll reserve any further comments until then. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate your input. Next item on tonight's agenda is David and Kristen Beers Trust request a subdivision amendment for the Firehawk subdivision, Merrill Brook Drive, Assessor's Map R7, Lot 4. Jamel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the applicant is proposing to amend uh, the subdivision plan for Firehawk subdivision uh, to specifically permit the use of Lot 10 as frontage along Merrill Brook Drive to provide for driveway access into an abutting property to the west. Uh, so the amendment does not propose to build any structure on Lot 10. There is a bit of a convoluted and complex history uh, for this subdivision, and in particular, uh, this Lot 10. Uh, staff has had many discussions over the years with the applicant, their legal team, and the town's attorney to uncover uh, the complex history of this lot. Uh, based on a legal review, the town is comfortable. The applicant has the legal right uh, to make this proposal uh, for tonight. So staff has offered several comments. Um, that are technical in nature and have incorporated these into conditions of approval uh, with a draft within a draft motion for the board to consider this evening and I'll, I'll leave it there Thanks Jamel. Sean. Thank you. Mr. Chairman uh, Number one major if you think it's confusing for you going through these at least you have your map I really want my map when I'm out here sitting in the audience because I had no idea what we were looking at on that map uh, Thank you. My name is Sean Frank. I'm an engineer with Sebago Technics uh, in South Portland, uh, on behalf here of, uh, of uh, uh, Craig and Kristen Brooks, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, let me get it, uh, Beers. Um, this, there is a history with this, like uh, Jamal was saying, basically in 1987, uh, the Merrill Brook subdivision was created. Uh, the owner of the land at that time basically sold the majority of the property to, the, to Merrill Brook for the subdividing of the land and held on to a pretty good piece that was associated with his farmhouse out there. As part of that, he also held on to the farm lot, which was across the, uh, the road of Merrill Brook Drive. Uh, actually, probably at that point in time, this should have been created as a lot because the fact that a right-of-way was dividing a piece of property, in fact, did create a lot. Um, we went through in the early 2000s to create the Firehawk subdivision, which was basically the remaining land at that time of the original owner, uh, including the farmhouse. The farmhouse was torn down. Uh, the original owner had actually sold two lots at that point in time, uh, and we labeled 
the pond lot, if you will, is lot 10 across the street. Uh, because again, just based upon our understanding of the rules and working with staff at that point in time, it seemed the appropriate thing to do to call that lot 10 uh, because in fact it was a, a piece of land separated from the remainder of the subdivision by a right of way. Uh, I actually came through to develop that lot with, a develop with an owner of that piece of property, or at least a, a person that was looking to purchase that piece of property. Um, uh, the issue at that point in time was the fact we couldn't find a passing test pit for, uh, for subsurface so soils uh, that met the town ordinance requirements. Um, so we looked for a waiver. Of course, getting a waiver for a new system is, is somewhat difficult, uh, and the board denied that at that point in time. Uh, the Beers have actually purchased this property. Uh, the main intent of that is they are looking at the uh, property to, uh, I believe that's to the west, I can't see the north arrow there, um, of the lot uh, to basically build a home. Um, so what we would really just need to utilize this lot for is for access to, uh, to Merrill Brook Drive, uh, because the piece of land that they will be purchasing will in fact have no frontage uh, on Holmes Road. So uh, uh, the intent is basically to combine this now at some point with uh, some other land that we need to survey. Obviously they're hesitant to go through that whole process uh, in terms of paying uh, the money associated with that until they know that we could do this. Uh, we do appreciate the time with staff because this has been confusing. It has been a lot of legal back and forth uh, between the, uh, the applicant's attorney and the, uh, and the town's attorney. I think we're at a good place now. Uh, we do understand the notations. I'll work with staff in terms of what the specifics of that notation needs to be on the plan uh, so that we can get you folks a mile out. But we would be asking uh, basically to amend the subdivision uh, specifically to allow access through Lot 10 with no building construction proposed for Lot 10. I know it's a little confusing, Mr. Chairman, but with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we have an opportunity for public comment on this item. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this topic, please approach the podium and state your name. Good evening, Mr. Chair. I am uh, a, an owner of a property on 3 Marylbrook Drive, and my only questions that I have is because I just bought the land I don't even know if I've met you or not, and I do apologize because it probably would have been easier if I spoke with you, but I don't know very many people. So my concern is I believe we are lot six on this map. I think it should say 1.84 acres, and um, we are on, like I said, three Merrill Brook, and lot 10, I don't know how far it goes, and I don't know the key, so I don't know if I should say it's the north, the north end of it, but it looks to me like possibly Lot 10 might also be right across from Merrill, from lot number three. So my concern is where would you be putting in that access road? And my understanding, you just said that you might be building a house that's adjacent to that lot 10. So what I, my concern is what type of a, a road will there be? And if it's going to be right across from my house, is it just going to be one house or is there going to be future for like another development so that I'm going to have cars going in and out of that access row right in front of my property? And, and that's my concern. And then I kind of like want, would like to know what's going on with uh, your current house. Is that going to be sold or torn down or whatever? Because the original plan that we we have shows that this lot was supposed to be removed so I am with everybody else this this whole property is very confusing and I'm just here to try to protect my home that I just bought <laughs> I don't want it to I want to see the value go up and not down for any negative impacts thank you mr. chair thank you and as uh, just so we're aware here in the audience as part of Robert's rules order all your comments or questions should be directed through the board. We, in turn, will then uh, attempt to ask them uh, of anyone that might have okay, knowledge in the audience. I will voice my question. Thank you. I don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've never done this before. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> You're, to, You're doing you just your fine. Into the record for us. Oh, I'm sorry. The property is actually owned by my husband and I, and I am Kathy or Lewis and Kathleen Little on 3 Merrill Brook Drive. And I believe it's lot six that I am um, concerned about. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Scarborough. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other owner comments regarding the project? Seeing none, I'm going to close owner comments section, and I'm going to turn this over to the board for discussion. Um, 
I'll go ahead and ask. Uh, would, is the owner available and would they give us a very brief um, description of where they believe this right away might go in and what would be uh, built out around? Yeah, sure. My name's Craig Beers. Uh, thank you for this time. Um, so I'll start off with my current home. My current home, our plan would be to eventually put that home up for sale. No plans at all to uh, to do anything um, specifically with it. As far as the road access, we would still need to um, determine the, the easiest access, but it would be somewhere along where lot 10 is. Um, it would be a standard 16 foot road uh, or, or whatever would be required, driveway rather. Um, and you can see on the, on the map, it's only a you know, 75 foot uh, strip that we would actually be crossing. Um, the home itself would be three or 400 feet into the woods. Um, so I think from your current residence, you would not even uh, see the house. And we have no plans to do anything but put a single family home there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, does anyone here on the board have any questions regarding this item? All right. Seeing none, we do have a motion prepared this evening. I move to approve the project titled First Amended Subdivision Plan, Firehawk Subdivision, proposed by David and Kristen Beers Trust, as depicted on the plan set prepared by Sebago Technics, did at 10 with the following findings and conditions. Findings, the first amended subdivision plan of the Firehawk subdivision includes a legal creation of Lot 10. The amendment also specifically permits the use of Lot 10 to access the abutting property to the west. The subdivision is located within the Rural Farming Zoning District. The planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed lot configuration adequately addresses the requirements of the zoning and subdivision ordinances. Conditions, one, prior to the signing and release of the Mylar, the plans shall, shall be revised to include A, Plan note stating the subdivision amendment officially designates lot 10 as an approved lot. B, revisions to plan note number 10 that includes one, language referring to the specific abutting property that the applicant intends to build their home on, and two, language indicating the specific location for the proposed driveway access shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department prior to the issuance of a driveway entrance permit and a building permit. That's the motion. Second. I have a second. Do we have any discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Thank you very Good luck much. To you. And next time uh, on Mr. Agenda. Chair, could I just make a comment very brief? You may. Uh, I, I had the same question that the abutting owner had, and I appreciate her asking it. Uh, and I. No, no, you did it perfectly well. Welcome to Scarborough, and, and so much of our work is helped by the feedback that we get from folks talking about the plans and talking about what's going on, so I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. All right, next item on tonight's agenda is 90A Payne Road, LLC, request a sketch plan review for 289 Payne Road, Assessor's Map R52, Lot 4A. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this project's located in the Highgis Parkway Zoning District along Payne Road, uh, across from Ginn Road. And the applicants before the board for a sketch plan this evening uh, for a 13,450 square foot building that will consist of up to six storefronts uh, for retail purposes. Staff would like to point out that we missed this during the initial review, but the zoning standards do require any project uh, located on five or more acres to be reviewed as a planned development in the Highgis Parkway district so the applicant uh, should either work with staff or refer to the zoning ordinance in preparing for uh, the future submissions required. Staff would like to point out that the Highgis Parkway zoning standards require parking to be located to the side or rear of the building on the site to the extent practical. Um, given the proposed design of the project, the board should have a discussion with the applicant about these design requirements. The applicant is also proposing approximately 30 more parking spaces than is required. Uh, given that this project is located in the Willowdale Brook watershed, which has been listed as threatened by the main DEP uh, due to increased development, staff has recommended the applicant consider eliminating some parking uh, to minimize impervious cover. And finally, the town's public safety departments have expressed some concerns about the proposed location uh, for the site's driveway given the lane configuration along Payne Road. Uh, so the Required traffic analysis should provide uh, details related to the safety of the proposed uh, driveway to the site. And that's it. Thank you, Jamel. Sean? 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Sean Frank with Sebago Tech Next. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Mark Loring, uh, the applicant and owner of the property. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, uh, we appreciate the time tonight. We did meet with staff and they did this, uh, say that we should probably come to you folks with a sketch plan, so we appreciate your time tonight. Uh, looking at the site plan, uh, we are proposing the access right now directly across from Hagas Park. I mean, Gin Road, it just seemed to make the most sense to us at that point in time. Uh, we do appreciate the fact that at that point, there is basically three lanes, two through lanes going uh, along uh, Payne Road as well as uh, the, the left turn lane into Gin Road. Our anticipation is, because it's 13 to 14,000 trips per day or traffic on the, on the road today, is that we're probably going to have a left turn lane coming into our driveway as well. And we do think that at that point, that that's probably going to make the most, you know, rather than trying to push the driveway further up, uh, have a left turn lane that so we widen out then thin back then widen back out again We think it's gonna make much more sense to have a left turn lane going in one direction in the Gin Road a left turn lane for us going into the driveway uh, But it, obviously we will work with the uh, the traffic uh, engineer associated with that as well as our, our public safety uh, But our first thought is it probably is gonna make most sense to have that where it is But again, we'll certainly be happy to, to work with that uh, in terms of the parking spaces. Uh, that's a very good point uh, we were actually looking at some other uses there besides just strictly retail. Um, and based upon that, we were looking at some additional parking, but uh, it's a very good point. I think what we'll do is probably keep the stormwater size for what it is in case we need the parking some point down the road. Uh, but we certainly will be looking at probably eliminating some of that parking uh, within that, that double bay, the second bay uh, in the back of the building. Um, we do know that obviously in the Hagas Parkway that you folks do like to see the parking uh, to the rear and to the side. Uh, certainly we do have uh, the majority of that to the rear. Uh, because of the retail use of this, we are specifically asking if we could have the parking to the front. Uh, obviously for access to the buildings, in front of the buildings uh, from a retail standpoint is very important to them. Um, We'd certainly be happy to, as you can see, proposing some uh, nice landscaping along the front, have a little berm there in the front with the landscaping. I would like to just note where we are in relationship. This is the Hagas Parkway zone, but it's on the very peripheral edge of the zone, if you will. Uh, obviously, you just approved an Acura next door to it with you know, uh, quite a bit of parking, obviously, in the front across the street. We have uh, basically the Cumberland Farms as well as the truck parking area for the Shaws. Uh, so again, we appreciate, uh, obviously, if we were maybe uh, more central to the zone, uh, maybe looking at that a little bit harder, but we do think that we like the layout of this site. We think it works well, um, and we would ask for that consideration associated with that. Uh, Jamel, do you have at least the, uh, the, 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 the architectural for the, the other rendering on that that we sent? I can find it. I, I'd appreciate it. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Henry sent it to you this morning. Yes, that one, please, if you could. I just wanted to kind of show the building and the, and the view we were talking about. Oh, uh, I apologize, Jamel. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> uh, that's probably, yes, there it is. So good. Um, so again, this is what's just showing more of a perspective, if you will, of the, of the uh, building looking from Payne Road. Again, what we're looking at is uh, a little landscape berm, and you can see we're really not showing the berm well, but we will get that in the next uh, rendering. Uh, but a little berm in front of the parking, uh, between the road and the parking. If you've been out there, and I think if you've seen what, the, the existing vegetation along the edge of Payne Road is, is nothing really to, worth saving, if you will. It's a lot of uh, 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 cat nine tails and those types of things, and uh, uh, obviously more of a, a scrub. Obviously, the further you get into the site, the more mature, more mature trees. Uh, but certainly we would see that, you know, basically between Payne Road and the parking area would pretty much be, uh, uh, you know, the, the existing vegetation cut. Like I said, the grading associated, the utilities associated with the site involved, uh, and then uh, a, a, a constructive berm to kind of hide the hi headlights, if you will, in the, in the lower portion of the cars and, uh, and put some landscaping in. So we can still see the peaks of the buildings. We do want to obviously still be able to see the buildings. You can see the land, uh, the architecture associated as we do have the peak roofs, uh, the entrances for the, uh, the individual individual storefronts, uh, you know, uh, trying to get that architecture that we know you folks uh, uh, do like, even though, again, we're kind of uh, uh, off to the, uh, to the edge of the zone, if you will. Um, but again, from that standpoint, Mr. Chairman, we would certainly appreciate the board's consideration to allow that parking in the front, and specifically the double row of parking in the front. Uh, with that, I'd uh, conclude my presentation, so I'll be happy to answer any questions that the board has. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we have an opportunity for public comment on this item. If there's anyone here that would like to speak, please approach the podium and state your name. Uh, they're all with me, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, they've had a dispute. They're sitting pretty far apart. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, seeing no public comment, I will close public comment. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly just start with a question um, right out of the gate. Uh, typically when we have applicants come in with more parking than necessary, they already have a reason behind it. So I'll ask the question that do you have um, potential tenants lined up and therefore is the reason you arrived at some of the numbers you have here for parking? We originally were looking at a restaurant to be perfectly yeah, on uh, Jamel I'm sorry can I have you go back to the to the site plan for me keep I know I like to see I just like to see you working Jamel I don't know what it is but I, I, I do uh, you see the biggest space at the end of the building we were actually looking at that as a restaurant space which obviously if I, based upon the seating we were looking at uh, required more parking uh, so that's kind of where we started uh, but again I think you see that back row the very back row of, of parking we'd actually we'd be happy to look at at least uh, you know cutting that back or maybe eliminating that altogether at least in, in this particular aspect just for the retail and I appreciate that information because um, some of us here on the board may have recalled there have been some restaurants slash pubs that yes. opened with maybe not enough parking yes. um, <laughs> so I can appreciate the foresight that you may need it and, and, and that's just why I, I think from a, a planning perspective that I think that that space will be there. I think we will maintain, uh, like I say, the stormwater management is a gravel wetland to the back of the site. Uh, I think we're going to maintain that to the size that's based upon the impervious area we're showing here now, just in case a, a use does come in that we may actually require that additional parking, even if it is a matter of coming back to this board to allow us to do that, that the space will be there and the stormwater management will basically be in place to associated with that. Yeah, and uh, just so I'm clear, the um, right behind the last proposed, you have a kind of a, is that a stormwater or is that a snow storage? What's that kind of circle line? There's the one right below it. Yeah, that and the one below it. Uh, yes, that was just basically some uh, some uh, particular area for snow storage more than anything else that we've just starting to identify. So it's not going to be a stormwater. Um, no, the stormwater. If you if, if you go all the way down, mm -hmm. it basically follow. There's the, there's the stormwater management down through there. Okay. So if you ever needed more, you wouldn't be running over your own work. Ex exactly. Thank you. Exactly. And I think we can have that. So it's, it's set up in pretty good shape and, and, and still have it ready to go if we need to. So, uh, and, and I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, you're, you know, this Payne Road and Haggis Parkway, I can think of uh, businesses in both locations on that street that do allow for street fund parking uh, rows. So... Personally, I'm okay with the, um, the configuration of having some parking in front and along Payne Road. I think that's fair. There are plenty of businesses that have parking along Payne Road. So. And I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. I will say the applicant is really going the extra step in terms of the architecture of the building, so I think you'll be very proud of the architecture. And like I say, I think we, with that, we can augment it with a good landscape and plan as well. So, I mean, obviously, we don't want it so you ride down and you just see this row of parking, if you will. I think we can soften the parking up, certainly. So, but, you know, so we have the ease of access to the, to the retail facilities uh, and still obviously hopefully maintain the visibility of the building itself uh, while trying to hide the parking a little bit. Fair enough. Um, and then the the one kind of one thing I'm looking at here is your, it looks like you get a one way kind of going around on that backside, one way drive. So that's, I guess, so you can pull into any of these parking columns, right? And you can reverse out and go back the other way, but as soon as you start to hit the back end of those lots? No, and again, I apologize for those arrows. That's a very, <laughs> that's very good. Yeah, it's a very good pickup. I just was seeing those as you pointed them out right now. Um, but no, that'll certainly be a two-way driveway. The intent really is for that because what I don't want is for people to pull into that front parking, can't find a parking spot, now they got to back up out of it. So that'll Thank certainly you. be a two-way, um, and, and I, I apologize for those arrows. We'll certainly get those corrected. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, as far as uh, you know, a sketch plan goes, I think I've added the commentary um, I feel necessary on my end. So anyone else like to jump in? Rachel? Yeah, I just took a look at the planting and I don't see an ivory uh, lilac tree. <laughs> well, I have it on Will's site, so I thought you were all set there. <laughs> okay. Um, Thank you, I, I, As I look at the design, I started to get just a little confused, which at this time of night is easy. Um, what's the what's really the front of the building in terms of access to the to the stores? It, it, because it really looks as though the, the way the back parking is configured and the doors back there, that well, people would want to be more likely to be going in that way. 
perhaps. I mean, certainly we want to make sure that we can maintain access to the back. So, I mean, as you know, what we basically wound up with is two fronts at this point in time. I mean, we really do. We wound up basically creating two fronts. But really, we want the, we think the front, especially from a retail perspective, the front is probably the main access point. It's just what I think people are used to uh, and certainly see, per, point in seeing. Certainly the parking, what we're anticipating is then parking, uh, a, a common sidewalk all along the edge of that parking leading to door fronts going to each one of them uh, with landscape strip between the building and the and the and the, and the, and the so sidewalk. one of the things that i would be looking at then for a sketch plan is um you know as you as you move forward with this is if people are going to be entering the buildings and, and it appears as though you know they're being invited in from the back parking lot how the architecture is going to mirror some of the architecture in the front. A lot of times back architecture just sort of is, well, we've got a parking lot back here. But it, to me, it's, it's as though the front and the back need to kind of mirror themselves. You're, you're absolutely right. And again, I, I think the front will certainly probably have more architectural features, if you will, but at the same time, the back's not going to just look like your standard back, working back, if you will. Uh, we will have actually elevations of, of the whole sides, and it certainly will be uh, for the front and back. And, and I have a feeling these, it sounds like these guys really want to say something. No, I just I, I want to say something real quick. Just introduce yourself. Yeah, I you will. Know. Thanks, Sean. My name's Andrew Ingalls. I'm a commercial broker at Malone Commercial, and I'm working with, with Mark. Mark and I go way back. And um, I worked a lot with the Downs. Actually, we sold this lot. This was the first lot that the Terry sold uh, about seven or eight years ago. Um, and your point is well taken. It, it, it is, it's too bad we, we've got some nice elevations from Port City Architect showing access from both sides because these centers, I handle the shopping center where Lois's is. You know, it's, it's called um, Scarborough Marketplace. And that, that facility is almost 100% service driven now. You know, it's an it's a orthodontist and a bank and, and the demand for these type of centers now aren't cash register oriented. They're much more service oriented. And you asked the question about the parking. One of the key components, we've got a, we've got a, a yoga studio that's very interested in the location and has, is, is going to sign a, a preliminary, you know, assuming we get through all the, all the things we need to to build it. But yoga studios are tricky, too. There's a lot of businesses like that because just 25 people means usually 25 cars. And they come in off hours. There's a place over in South Portland called Green Postures. Green Postures? Yeah, I'm saying that right. And, it, and it, it would fill up the whole parking lot at 740 Broadway, um, which was under under um, utilized parking wise because of the nature of the business. So we wanted to be sure when we were designing it initially that we could handle businesses, service type businesses that tended to have uh, crowds of people at certain times. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, for this facility already, and you guys know Scarborough real well, that area of Payne Road is going like crazy. And I'm talking to a dentist. There's that type of business is much more um, aggressive about these than straight retail is. So it's, um, and they're good for the center. A mix of both is very good because you bring in people on a, on a regular basis, on an appointment basis, and you have staff, but you also have a mix of retail, which we certainly would welcome here, of course. But uh, I just wanted to explain our, our, our line of reasoning as far as parking and who our uh, potential clientele will be. It's, we, we, I could probably sign three um, letters of intent now, take up two thirds of the space. It's very popular there. You know, all the apartments you can build, all the, the massive development at Scarborough Downs. It's a, it's a really nice spot for it. And it's the last development before Scarborough Downs Road because they say I handle the Downs for two and a half years for the Terries and all the land. If you look at the lot, all the land to the left of it is resource protection all the way to the downs. So, and they, you'd call it a six acre parcel. It's, it's, you know, you, it, I don't think it matters in your zoning, but three of the acres are un, unworkable, what it's worth. Only three acres can be built on. That's my two cents. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Uh, Mark Loring. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself and just make a quick comment. Um, I do all my stuff in a different town that abuts you, which go unnamed, and I get along really well with the planning department. I, Sean and I work with them all the time. But I was really impressed on how quickly the staff comments came back from our meeting with Jamal and um, uh, Jay. Jay. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you for considering this. And, and we did have a very specific discussion just last week 
with everything that Ms. Hendrickson was talking about. You know, how do you make the back look? You don't want to, like, exit doors on the back. So the back is, I'm not going to say it's a mirror image, but it's darn close as far as glass and, and entranceways. Thank you. Rick. Uh, I'm done. Thank you. Rick. Yeah, and, then the, and I think the chairman hit right on that. That's that was me. I obviously I had arrows. Not, not I should have had double arrows there for going both directions. The, the, the intent certainly is that if you pull into that front parking area and you can't find a front park, you can't find a parking space. You don't have to back out of that. That you can just go around. So that will be a two-way driveway going around the building. How wide is that? Uh, it's 24 feet. So it is a full. It's a full driveway. All right. Yeah. That, that's yeah. No. So no. He, <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Rick. First thing I thought was either it's going to be a Starbucks or a Dunkin' Donuts there. Well, and then just so you, <laughs> <laughs> and you may be, I, that's why I didn't want to admit it. That may be why we had some leftover lines, because maybe we were looking yeah. at something like yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but now that uh, that's been corrected, um, no, I'm just, for a sketch plan, I think you've uh, touched on a, on a, on a well-done, good-looking building. Uh, I look forward to seeing your, your submissions as you continue through the process. Thank you. Thanks. Jen. Um, I don't think I have anything super specific other than to just echo some of the staff comments about um, parking. And I understand that until your tenants in full, um, you know, build out plan is in place, those numbers will probably continue to shift even on your own end. Um, but just keep in mind, you know, that uh, we have seen some other successful projects that um, just d dash that in and reserve, you know, as right. needed. You could build it later if, if um, you know, current proposed parking or initial parking becomes a problem. Um, uh, and I, I also had the same question about the, the architecture and sort of front and front of the building, but as you're talking, um, there's a couple, actually this sort of reminded me of a, a newish building off of Marginal Way in Portland that actually has um, parking, front parking off of Marginal Way and then backloaded additional um, inventory with, with full equal access on both sides, um, entrances, similar doorways and things like that. So um, if anyone here is curious what that might you know what that might look like or what it's like to walk into a, a retail space like that there are some other examples around um uh yeah no it sounds like a great a and, great uh, and i think you that. hit it right on the head and i think you'll see more and more of those types yeah. of buildings because obviously we are trying to pull buildings closer to the road at this point in time uh, but i do think it's important for a lot of them do have that front access so i think you're right you wind up the old days, the building would be sitting back 200 feet and it'd be all parking lot between the building and the right. roadway. Yeah, I think now yeah. they're trying to hit that middle ground, if you will, some parking in the front, but yeah. more of it in the back. So you're basically winding up with storefronts on both sides of the building. Certainly appreciate that effort in the building siting. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Roger. Um, first, I, I, um, I think the rendering of the, uh, the building and the landscaping I like the fir trees and everything. I think that looks really nice. It does look nice. Of course, I got to start talking to these folks too and find out exactly, you know, what year would that be in terms of the landscaping? Because <laughs> it looked, it looked very nice. I have a feeling it might not look quite like that day number one. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think the building, the design of the building looks nice too. The only comment I would make on the on the building as what we we have here is, um, I think the way you have signs on the building right now on this print, I think it would look nicer if you just had a main sign out by the access and then have smaller signs on the buildings because the building looks pretty attractive, you know? Yeah, those are overflowing. What where it says side in? Andrew, yeah. Yeah. Andrew. Oh, yeah. You gotta come talk, come on. <laughs> Don't you guys. <laughs> small. Yeah, okay. Uh, the got the millions question. of people out listening, Andrew. We gotta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other question, um, the restaurant I assume is gonna be the in the 
the lodger. We were we were talking about a restaurant. That was, and that's why, in terms of the amount of parking and, and my leftover arrows, I think we were okay. kind of. Uh, uh, but you're right. No, we're, we're actually it's it's going to be more. We're definitely looking at retail slash professional services at this point. Yeah. In time. Okay. But assuming it was going to be a restaurant. Okay. Hypothetically. Okay. <laughs> Um, did you ever consider flipping it so the restaurant is closer to the access point? Did you have a discussion about it? Just curious. Because it seems to, seems to me we, you might we, have more. I'm trying to think. We thought we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it at length. Um, and we had a tenant for a restaurant. Um, but the amount of parking, additional parking, it's way more than that for a restaurant. We didn't think it was feasible. Um, and because there was so much interest in other things, you know, service-related stuff that Andrew had told me about, that um, I opted for less wear and tear than you'd have with a restaurant. Um, I've owned a lot of restaurants, and uh, I don't want a restaurant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against it. <laughs> I should tell you, actually, that Mark is the owner of Saltwater oh, Grill in South Portland. Yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe just as one more competition. I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, I'm all set. Yeah. Thanks, Roger. All right, I think you've got pretty much everyone's comments. Wow. And Angela would like to make one. Yes, yeah. go ahead. I just wanted to clarify for the applicant, too, um, that I know we talked about staff's comments about the location of the entrance. And it was really something that came up with emergency um, uh, responders, uh, PD and fire, <coughs> just looking at how that works for the lanes. And I think what you've done is explain that with your turning lanes and how coming in and out. And I think all we're, so we weren't specifically asking you to move the entrance what we're that. asking Sorry. you to do is provide information to show how that's a safe location or if you find that it's not you move it but I think we're not asking because obviously typically we'd want to line up with Gin Road right right so that's our first instinct also um, it's just to make sure the board has information to make sure how that works with all the lanes going on there. I appreciate that, Angie. And obviously, we'll, as you know, you, yeah. you folks asked for a pretty robust traffic study. So uh, 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 certainly we're in the process of preparing that. Uh, like I said, it was just based upon that and just looking at the, uh, the ADTs for that, for Payne Road at this point in time. I, I don't think the turn-in numbers have to be very large before, because of the ADTs, it's, they have to be very large before we're going to be looking at a left turn lane. And if, if we're looking at a full left turn lane there, that then I definitely think that that makes the, the most sense. So, uh, uh, but again, we do have that traffic folks on it, and certainly we'll provide that information to you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. All right. Have a good night. See you next time around. Um, staff report. I have one item. Um, so we met with the Downs team briefly, uh, I guess today, it's Monday, um, and we were just wondering if the board, um, for the next uh, master plan submission for the new residential neighborhood, if you prefer to maintain the separate workshop or if you would like for them to, you know, be part of a regular meeting agenda. I just wanted to ask and see what you guys thought. My two cents is... Um the workshop is a pretty effective way to just be focused on what is a very large project in scope. Not being one that likes a lot of meetings and having a, additional nights out, I do agree that the workshop does tend to focus us on that particular project and allows us to take care of business. So hopefully the subsequent meetings that they're in front of us won't be as long. Yeah, I, I like the idea of a workshop. We can. It's a lot. the The questions are have a better flow, and it's a lot easier to follow up and a lot easier to get clarity than something that's as formal as this. So I would I would appreciate a workshop. Sounds like we're doing a workshop. Thanks. I have another staff comment, too. Another staff comment, <laughs> If you don't mind. Um, just, I wanted to take the opportunity. I know we have a couple of board members that um, I think are honing in a little more on the lighting, which I really appreciate, the two on the ends here in particular. Um, and I just wanted to um, encourage that, I guess, a little bit. I know, especially when we're talking about some of the lots with new industrial areas coming online, um, and I know one of the things we looked at, um, I found the other night as I was crossing the marsh that there is a brown glow of mm -hmm. sorts. 
um, over some other industrial areas in town. And I want to just remind the board that there's an opportunity not only when those get redeveloped, but um, there's some sites in there that I'm finding that aren't that old. It was just something that might have not been the focus of the board at the time. Um, and just to kind of make sure that we're kind of looking at even, especially with these new lots, that there's opportunities to make sure they're full cut off and that we don't have the big floodlights that you see in some industrial areas in older industrial areas, yep. let's say. Um, and like I said, and somehow have gotten through in some other newer <coughs> sites. Um, so I just wanted to say I appreciate that you guys are actually kind of looking at those because that's something that sometimes gets forgotten until it's there staring you at the face and you can see it like a spotlight across the marsh. And I know innovation is set back, however, the lots in front of it will be cleared. Yep. <laughs> and so you will be seeing these lots from Payne Road eventually if you have some of that, those lights kind of shining through. Not that they're doing anything wrong at this point or that they're not following the rules. It's just good to kind of keep those in mind as we go through what it will look like from other areas around it, I think is important. So I appreciate the board kind of honing in on those a little. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Uh, administrative amendment report. Uh, there have been two since the last meeting, uh, down over at Main Health, a few lots down to the south, uh, they put in a second generator next to the existing generator on a pad, and then the Scarborough Land Trust um, is putting in a new parking area and driveway for a new, uh, the new Blue Point Preserve off of CV Landing Road. Um, and we worked, with, staff worked with them for an adequate design. Thank you. Uh, correspondence. Do we have any? Planning board comments. Planning board comments this evening. Roger. Um, <clears throat> yes, I was, um, I was pleased when uh, Jamal said that, that the staff is working with the Downs people on these private roads, because um, as Jen mentioned, uh, this is going to be an issue uh, for 50 some of our lots. And uh, <laughs> it would be nice not to have to you know, deal with this all the time. Uh, makes it more, makes it difficult for us as well as for the prospective um, owners of the property, the businesses. So hopefully, you get this resolved. Yeah, and I will say you, you won't have to not deal with it, um, but hopefully, it'll provide clarity for how to deal with it. It's <laughs> <laughs> important distinction. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, any other planning board comments? Yes, Jen. Thanks for the map. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. That's all. All right. Anything else? I will make a motion to adjourn. So, hey. so moved. Come on, Rachel. <laughs> I did. All in favor. <laughs> so unanimous. Thank you very much.